Oh, it's still on line 123. What happened? <laughs> I thought we did that. <laughs> I might have hit undo. Uh. Yeah! Uh. Super cold today in Berkeley. It was so cold today in Berkeley. It was weird, right? It was like, it felt colder than some of those dark winter days. I don't know what it was. Yeah, but it was cold and bright and sunny. It was almost almost like a, an actual winter day somewhere else, like after the sun uh, comes through. Yeah, it was like sneakily sunny, mm -hmm. but cold. Yeah, I, I was definitely freezing my toes off today, but it was lovely. Mm. The rain yesterday was really cool. I've really enjoyed the, the couple like almost thunderstorms we've gotten. Yeah, they're kind of just like they sneak in at night. They rain on everything, and then they leave during the day. That's like some uh, gosh darn proper weather. Do you think it's colder? Do you think it's like more humid? Perhaps is that is that a possibility? That's why it feels colder. Hmm. That's a good question. You ever? You do you know the you know the phenomena of like a really wet cold? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I when I was on the East Coast in Louisiana, we yeah we definitely had nothing but damn cold there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, I enjoy a little variety in in California too, so this was not so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wasn't bad at all. Yeah. Uh, happy Thursday. How 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 was your day? Uh, it was good. This week has felt long. It sure has. <laughs> do I say that every week? Uh, I don't want. I don't want to sound too negative here. Comes up frequently, but this this week also felt long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have been doing far far too much pair programming uh, at work. Which like I'm sorry to I'm sorry to bring you down because <laughs> what because no, you got I another like, couple hours of it, my friend. I like this pair programming. Well, this is this is fun, but like having to pair program on like a, a, a ticket is hard work. Uh, okay, and sort of and sort of goes against the normal way I like engage with work, which is to sort of goof off for an hour and then write thirty minutes of code to solve the problem and then goof off for another hour. <laughs> this this is not that. Yeah, we're just goofing off for two hours. We just goof off for two hours. It's great. Yeah. And now look, we've got a dog in the game. Everything is good. Oh, wait, let's let's see this dog. I mean, just the same dog as before. He's kind of creepy, though. His head turns around. The head is extremely creepy, but I still do love it. Uh, yeah, it looks great. <laughs> still looks awesome. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, uh -uh. I, I like that we can do that across the network. I think that's really key. Uh, <laughs> we can, that's, this is how you communicate in the game, is gestures? Gestures only, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why? People won't have to unlock gestures. They'll have to figure out gestures. Mm -hmm. uh boy what are we doing today what did we do on, uh, what did we do on monday <laughs> we, we had we had a knockback it's pretty oh, sweet oh yeah that's true uh i was thinking that maybe the knockback we should switch the values it feels like we should be getting knocked back further by getting hit right is that oh i think they're backwards you think they're backwards oh and you know how we can solve that let's go to that constants file Gosh, look at this. Beautiful. Uh, okay. So this should be... Huh. Oops. It's weird. When I hit escape, oh, hey. zoom, zoom captures escape. Crook Crookie's in the chat. What's up, Crookie? Hey, Crookie. How's says, it going? says, uh, what kind of pizza am I eating? This is a... Uh... What did I get? I got a Zachary's white pizza, thin crust, which is sort of a an unorthodox pizza combo. That is, yes, two things that are the opposite of what Zachary's are known for. Uh, this white pizza is like ricotta and mozzarella and like something else. It's so good with hot sauce and lemon juice on top. Mm. Wow. So white sauce is like a Alfredo kind of thing. I, you know, this isn't super Alfredo. -y. It's ju it's just like an ex it's like a triple cheese pizza. But but they have nailed it. I highly recommend it. Um, my, it'll be hard for me to, to get away from spinach and mushroom. That's my jam. I mean, that is quite quite yeah. a good jam. Yeah. Well, I'm glad Crookie's on, on on chat tonight. Yeah, we got and Dean. Oh my gosh, there's like a lot of people hanging out here. Nice. Woo. Howdy, Dean. 
Well, we've got a little bit uh, of a less severe knockback now Dean on the says, shot. Dean says, who's ready to get that vaccine, buddy? <laughs> I am. 100%. Um, now, I, I think there... I think... I'm not trying to exploit the system here, but I'm told that you can volunteer uh, at a vaccine distribution site and in return, you will be given the vaccine. So I've also been told that, but I can't, I, I filled out the volunteer form and there's no plate. There's no, there's no slots. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Well, that's good. They need people to, 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 man, to help, help man yeah. those places. Uh, Kirky says this, this could be vaccine tanks. Yeah. Vaccine tank. Yeah. Now it feels like the knockback is too much on the shots. Hmm. And it's almost too. Ah, this is okay for the. It's okay for that. Yeah. Not not all weapons are going to do this, anyways, right? Yeah, exactly. It's only the only the special weapons. Yeah. <laughs> Acupuncture me, Biden. Wow. <laughs> I've I've seen I've seen a lot of friends using the term the Fauci ouchie to to describe the shock, which I think is really weird and super funny. Um, I hope I'm not. Uh, I, I hope I'm not discouraging uh, vaccine skeptical people in, in the chat right now, but um, I, know, I know several people that have gotten the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my mom's fully vaccinated by at this point. Both, um, both my parents, too. It's great. Yeah. And my sister, who's a doctor, obviously has gotten vaccinated. Uh, and, and for her in particular, uh, the vaccine kind of fucked her up. I've heard, I've heard sometimes you get Pretty severely the first time and really severely the second time. <laughs> I had, I had a, a, a delivery driver come by on like a Saturday. I was like, oh man, thanks for coming out on the weekend. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm just putting some extra hours. Uh, I got my vaccination, so I'm saving up for a trip to Hawaii because uh, we're all essential workers. And I was like, damn, like that's a good reward. Y'all do. That's fantastic. Y'all should get yeah. the first vaccines. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad they, I'm glad they're getting prioritized. It's the only reasonable way to prioritize. Yeah. Although I feel like the discourse now is like um, people on Twitter yelling at other people who don't get their vaccine because they feel like they're undeserving of it or they feel like other people can get it more. It's it's a very confusing. Well, I died. You died. You have we have a lot of hit points, but not, we have ten thousand hit points, and I got did no, I get shot ten thousand times? It, it's only a hundred. It's only a hundred. So I got shot a hundred times. That's believable. Mm -hmm. Is this game just like straight up crash? It uh, does. Yeah. This game crashes. Yeah, we are we are crash first software as uh, it's like it's a, a classic classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Space. Fail fast, fail fast, right? <laughs> fail closed, fail fast. Yeah, but we kind of did. But wait, why? Can you explain the non-deserving vaccine people to me again? I do not comprehend. Um, so this is a very weird corner of social media. Like people. Like, People get on social media to get angry at other people. I think that's basically how it goes, right? It's like half of it, yeah. Yeah, and to be fair, we're 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 now like we're now like social media moguls thanks to this stream, and we're just angry at people half the time. So this is this is really just an instance of the pod ca ca calling the kettle black. But apparently, there is a subset of vaccine qualified people that don't want to get the vaccine because they think they'll be fine like they're not in the high risk population and they think that somebody else who maybe is at higher risk it, i think it's a it's it's a it's it's an understandable position for someone to have yeah, but they sound wrong yeah but there's like the meta discourse around that is that like people on twitter are like yelling at those people because I guess the thinking is that if you're eligible for the vaccine, you should just go and do it. Cause the point isn't, it's not about you. It's about the, it's about the network effect that you contribute to. Right. I can't wait till we can yell at each other about this in person. <laughs> it's really inspiring stuff. Right. <clears throat> and at that point it would be, if you, we could yell at each other safely in person, <clears throat> you could maybe claim that it would be pointless to even have the conversation in the first place. <laughs> It's true. But I will happily yell at you once uh, in person, once this, is, once this is all over, if and when. It's coming, Dom. When? When? Yeah. Uh, 
a a friend was showing a friend of a friend was showing me some spreadsheets today that was, they were like they were like we are beating my trend line for getting back to life by September uh, by quite a lot, which is great. This person has a trend line. Are they are they a public policy expert or are they just like super nerdy? You know, uh, ex- exceptionally nerdy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 nerdiest. Uh, but yeah, of their many spreadsheets, the trend line uh, looks really good, and we keep beating their prediction for vaccinations and like what, what, infections. So this person is 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 are they like ec- economists or like are they they're just this is their hobby? Uh, I'm fascinated by this. Honestly, close enough to economists, yeah. Okay. All right. So so there's like reason for them to have to maintain such a spreadsheet. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Okay. All right. So. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Um, well, what's a, what's a, what's a fun gameplay thing uh, that we need to do next? Because uh, mm. I got a ton of technical debt oriented stuff that I could talk about, but I kind of want to be be pushing the envelope a little bit on the gameplay, mm-hmm. if possible. Mm-hmm. Let's see what. Okay, we could add some weapon switching. We could. Um... Mm. Could bring in some character model stuff. Uh, maybe maybe you want to be a tank or a dog. We really we really shouldn't enforce that. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, right. We could. Let's see. Uh, Why don't we try a different weapon type? Okay. Yeah. Let's bring in bring in like a. There's a bu- there's a bunch of options actually. Our spreadsheet of of potential choices was fairly limitless. Yeah, what I worry about is that our graphical capabilities aren't super great right now, right? And in particular, we don't have a particle emitter. 3D particle emitter would be fun as heck. We could try doing a particle emitter. Yeah, we sort of lo- our our particle emitter sort of fell down um, with the advent of netplay, and we never really sort of got it back to a, a good state, did we? You know, I think it was still working when we had net play, only that we just like create a shit ton of particles during the uh, yeah. It had like a simulation. It had like a funny behavior, exactly. Yeah, um, which is a problem that we still need to solve. By the way, mm-hmm. um, how do you not replay side effects when you're rewinding uh, state? Right. Um, but I think we really lost the particles when we went 3D. <laughs> we'll have to write a 3D particle emitter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be pretty sick too. You want to you want to do you don't work on a three D particle emitter. Let's do it. So that was that what I'm hearing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we should try to make this as quick and dirty as we can we can make it um, because I think that again, um, we want to work on things that uh, that contribute to the feel of the game and the mechanics of the game. Mm-hmm. Particle emitters aren't 100 percent that, but they do help us imply like larger explosions they do they 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 go a long way in like at least helping us read the game even in a primitive form right yeah no i think it's i think it's important in in the yeah just the larger like the game will not feel like the game without that sort of stuff and and they were really nice beforehand uh just as feedback so yeah yeah all right well uh i guess one way we could do this do we still have, is, have the old particle emitter? <laughs> it, I, do we? I, I, don't, I don't think it's dead. I, I think it's it's here. Oh, yeah, okay. I guess, yeah, I'm just trying to re- recall what we did, which was it was largely just uh, a random... It was just tossing off random cubes, or random uh, squares. Circles, random circles. Random circles. Uh, we could do quads. Right, and then just have them all floating at the same white, like the same level off the ground. Mm-hmm. That would be not a bad initial thing to do. Yeah, I don't think we need to deal with like fountains or. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we could do in 3D, but yeah, I think just very simple stuff would be nice. Yeah. All right. So then, then, then there's the question of how we, because uh, doing it in 3D forces us to think about how to allocate. Um, you know, memory for the geometry of the mm-hmm. buffers. So I, probably what we're talking about is a ton of quads or a ton of triangles, right? Which do you prefer, triangular particles or, 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 or squares? Let's let's go let's go real silly and just keep it triangles. Like okay, super primitive. Yeah, I feel like circles were great in um, uh, the two D context as we had them, but like mm-hmm. let's let's keep it as basic as possible. Right. Okay. Um, and so when we create a particle emitter. 
do we allocate like a new a new buffer for every particle? Do we pre-allocate a bunch of triangles and mm. swap them in? How how does this work? That is a good good question. Yeah. Um, and then what would the shader look like, right? Is it like a new uniform for every position of the particles, or should we maybe try to do an attribute for every... Oh, gosh, this got exponentially more complex uh, with the move to 3D. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Fair enough. Are there... Am I uh, sort of misunderstanding, but there are some particle meters that are purely shader-driven, right? Or is that not how it works? Uh, it is possible. Like I, said, I was thinking of like the Ghost of Tsushima thing where it's like, it seems like they're given one object and then the shader is actually the thing that is, that is sort of splaying the leaves onto the screen. But is that like a type of shader we don't have access to here? Um, I, I, I don't know the answer to the question. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I, me neither, which is why I ask it. <laughs> So I do think particles are geometry, right? I, I do mm -hmm. think that they're, they are represented by geometry. Um, you could probably do a particle shader that's fully in the frag shader, but you still have to draw it on a surface somehow. There's like the, the issue of geometry is always going to be there, yep. right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, why don't we try the, the, the most brute force thing possible and then see... See where that takes us. I love right? it. Yeah. OK. So our renderer currently works very basically, where in the beginning, you load a model. And you do that once at the initialization phase. And the cubes are models. The trees are models. The whole terrain is, is a single model. Mm -hmm. The turrets are models. Sorry, not the tanks, the dogs. dogs. There's no tanks anymore. There's no tanks. Yeah, even even the little bullets are models, right? Mm -hmm. Those get loaded once. Uh, and then to draw different instances of them, we call draw model with a string key. And that is one draw call per model, right? One draw call per instance of the model, or is it per? Per instance of the model, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. So each of these are, every tree is a single draw call, every dog is a single draw call, the whole terrain is, is a single draw call. Mm -hmm. um, the grid is a single draw call. Um, every one of these little like debug draw rectangles is its own draw call, right? Now, if, 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 we're, adding a part, if we're adding many particle emitters, uh, it sh sounds like one draw call per particle will be far too much. That's what I'm getting at, yeah. right? One, and, and we said that our particle is a triangle, right? Yep. So this may be a case of wanting to maybe at least do one draw call per particle emitter, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. And our particles are going to be like different sizes, different rotations, mm -hmm. different positions, right? And different colors as well. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start to think about a shader, right? What does our current shader look like? Actually, I think probably the shader, uh, do I have a standard shader? Yeah, the solid shader? Solid shader. Solid shader, yeah. This is the solid shader, does this have, uh, it has a uniform color. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this is maybe what we'd be thinking of, right? Is that we have a single color per, per particle. Um, the particle model is probably going to be identical for every single particle, right? It's going to be three points that are scaled. It could even be just like a, a like a, hmm. maybe be a triangle that's the size of a grid tile, right? Right, because we're just going to scale it randomly in a lot of directions based on some constant factor. Yeah, yeah. we're going to scale it, rotate it, and then translate it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be like a per particle thing. Right, so it can't be uniform because if the uniform doesn't change for the entire draw call, and we're saying that we want all of the particles, so all of the triangles within uh, a single emitter to be a single draw call, mm -hmm. right? 
which means that our we might finally need to bust out with instance instance rendering here. Oh, WebGL Fundamentals has it. Then we're in good hands. Yes. Is there a, is there a <laughs> WebGL WebGL two I fundamentals like, version I like that of this? We can just guess the URL on these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This dude's amazing. Uh, I feel sad because um, he, he's a fellow named Greg Tavares. He worked on the WebGL team uh, at Chrome, so he's like eminently qualified to be working on this stuff. Um, uh, and he's amazing, right? He wrote he, he writes this great documentation, uh, and he responds a lot on uh, Stack Overflow. I think he's got like a fifty thousand st like Stack Overflow rank or score or whatever you call it. Damn, he's got the points. Um, but I think. His blog post, it might have made lobsters or, or, or hacker news, or he basically like quit Stack Overflow in a huff because uh, he was bad. tired of getting... He was, he was tired of just Stack Overflow shenanigans, like people lawyering in and saying that this wasn't a good answer or a good question. Uh, Anyone who would come to this guy and be like, hey, that's a bad explanation, uh, should like examine something yeah I, I think he was also a little bit miffed that sometimes his answer wasn't the top voted one and i don't think he was karma hunting i think it was more that like the clearly incorrect answer got got the, the green check mark that's a yeah that's a harder uh <laughs> sometimes you know what maybe maybe the wisdom of the crowd just isn't actually there uh, yeah yeah that's too bad okay um so instance drawing it is basically a way to draw more than one of the same thing faster than drawing each thing individually. That sounds pretty appro pretty proximate to what we're talking about, right? Yes. Um, first, let's make an example that draws multiple instances of the same thing. Uh, he's got a shader here that takes a position of a vector as an attribute, mm -hmm. and he's got a, uni a uniform transform matrix, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, looks, looks pretty familiar so far. Yeah. What does this out V color mean? Is that that the attribute? Usually, when I see out, that that implies to me that the vertex shader body will assign that value. Yeah, is this how you pass something in v color? That's really weird. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if his code uh, assigns it as an attribute. Let's see here. Yeah, because I know we've we've sort of encountered Position. a problem before where our uh, we wanted to have an attribute that only our second shader used. His colors are uniform, which is interesting. When I noticed colors are uniform and there is a vertex color in the out. Yeah, this seems like a, maybe just a bug. Okay. Right. Which is entirely possible, right? I, I, well, we should not downvote him on Stack Overflow, but uh, it's pretty rough. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Um, there's a whole science to doing these like code snippets and making sure that they comp they actually compile. Oh gosh, it's so challenging. I believe you and I worked on this exact problem at some point. Yeah, we did. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember that really fun uh, little blockchain editor. Mm. How yep. <laughs> uh, Jeff, why is the blockchain back? Is it is it surreal now to reflect on the idea that we worked on blockchain? Yeah, it was surreal then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you speak the truth, I guess. Yeah, it was... it, it, just blockchain's coming back right now, right? People are talking about it again, and I'm like, I feel weird about it. Blockchain is extremely back right now. Uh, yeah. How, what did that JPEG sell for? Six million. Sixty million dollars. Sixty. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, I don't understand scarcity economics. Apparently. <laughs> No, I think you understand it in a crystal clear way. <laughs> per perhaps. Yes. Um, hence your sense of disbelief. Uh, it's a JPEG. Right, so let's just ignore that this is there. <laughs> okay. That this is you know, um, this is a fairly stock standard ver pair of shaders here, right? Um, and this is not doing instance rendering, right? Uh, he's going to have to do a bunch of draw calls here. Mm -hmm. uh, he, compiles, he compiles a shader, grabs his locations for the various variables. That's all straightforward. Creates a VAO. 
right? This is going to store our, our geometry buffers. This mm -hmm. is going to store the mesh. Feels good so far. Uh, then throws a bunch of positions in there. Good lord, how many is this? That's one vert, it's a second vertex, it's a third vertex, and it's a fourth vertex. Mm -hmm. Isn't that insane? Like, a one quad is just, like, this much. It's very disheartening, it's, isn't it? It's pretty rough. Looking at the actual data for this, I, I'm honestly shocked that we're pushing this much data through a browser and it just it's works. It's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had to do this stuff, right? Didn't I, like, make a cube? Or something like you that. You already keep my hand, and it looks totally silly. Yeah. Yeah. There uh, you go. Th that's <laughs> beautiful. There's a lot going on here. Uh, I had a good time. It's just very much like you can kind of zen out and do mm -hmm. stuff, right? There's something funny about my, my formatter. I think we might have updated mm. prettier versions or something like that. Because this was certainly auto formatted at one point in time. That's a bummer. Uh, but if I save now, it'll reformat. And to be honest, this is fine. That's Six fine. of one, half, yeah. half dozen of the other. You know. Um, okay. It's going to do five instances of this thing. Mm -hmm. Right? It's got five transform matrices, because they're going to be positioned differently, five, diff five distinct positions, uh, five distinct colors for this thing. And he's going to do four each, and he's got a draw call for each one of those things. Right? Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Oh, this is cool. It's actually a, a much more complicated piece of geometry than I thought was going to emerge from this. Neat. Okay. Uh, you know what? This is a. Uh... Dean says, heck, "Heck yeah, I love those crosses." Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty sick. Actually. Oh, you know what? Um, I think I might have mistaken this. These these are two dimensional positions, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is the yeah. is the third coordinate just zero? Uh, uh, let's, look at the shader. let's look at the shader. Um, well, it's a VEC4, mm -hmm. but, I, but I think that uh, WebGL will auto fill in, uh, will fill in zeros for the things that, I think it fills in a zero for X, Y, and Z, and it fills in a one for W. Right? Oh, you're totally right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. just how that, yep, cool. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much complexity in WebGL. It's like, yeah, you just, of course, of course it does that. <laughs> Oh gosh, it's really. <laughs> I love it though. Well, I'm I, I'm throwing shade, but I love it. Uh, yeah, I think I love it too. It's just yeah. bizarre. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we're not ready metal. <laughs> I would absolutely yeah. tear my hair out. Yeah. Maybe soon. We'll see. Uh, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably do rust before we do metal. Mm. Yeah, seems likely. Yeah. Okay. So here's the change. Uh. He's like, okay, you know what, screw it. I, I set up the straw man only to burn it down, right? Um, is straw man gen an example of gender language that we should be uh, we should avoid using? No. Is, okay. Is straw man like, somehow racist in a way I don't understand? Uh, it's it's just the presence of the word man because like you know we avoid saying like mailman and fireman or policeman these days. Oh, you know I feel like I feel like there would have to be a a straw. There, there is no straw other person though. I don't know. It's not a real person. I think straw. Man I've heard works. some people use the, the term straw dog, which has a very similar meaning. Huh. And I think etymologically, it's actually quite sound. I guess it was an expression from from Chinese. I, 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 I speak Chinese, but I've never heard of this before. But. Straw dog. No, I. You honestly, you had not. My mind had never even sort of. But like, are, are, consider are, are, those are possibilities. we, are, are, are we, um, are, are, are we committing a, 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 a kind of like foul, like a party foul if we, if we use gender language for terms like straw man, right? I honestly do not think so. Okay. All right. No, cause I, I'm much more concerned about catching someone's like a actual representation with, you know, male people. Yes. Uh, Dan, straw man is not actually a person. Yeah, Dan, Dan Kirk says business boy is a greater term than businessman, and he is he is correct. <laughs> hey, business boy. I'm I'm a big fan of business boys. Yes. <laughs> I left you a cabin boy, and I returned to you a cabin man. <laughs> Did you ever see that movie? It's it's in my head, but I don't know what that's from. It's from Cabin Boy. Maybe I don't, maybe I haven't seen it. Maybe I just people say that. Okay. Business child. Don't worry about it. It's not. It's not. It's not a good movie. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, gets rid of the uniform, turns the transform into uh, uh, a full matrix. Sorry, uh, into an attribute, right? So the transform matrix, full matrix. This is a four by four, sixteen floats. Now a attribute. This is coming in per per vertex, right? Um, so that's a, this is a weighty attribute, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we do about that? Um, so yeah, so he's making the matrix an attribute. Um, gets him in there. Yeah, he's just jamming him in there. I think this is another straw man that he's putting up. Multiple layers of straw dogs. <laughs> Look, we have dog in the game. We might as well just replace our, our everything I mean, with dogs. We can, we can call it a straw dog. Okay. <laughs> you write a straw shader and we're good to go. All right. I think he's setting up another straw man here. Um, oh, dynamic draw. What in friggin' hell is this? What? Oh, I've seen this. This is the, the thing that we are... Yeah. That means he's going to be binding new data into that in buffer. Same buffer, which we never do, right? Which, which we've never done before. Interesting. Yeah. Um, huh. So this is actually something I wasn't expecting. So I, I think I, think I want to sort of bookmark this particular point here. Cool. Because uh, I want to know how you can dynamically update a buffer. Like, do you have to rebind it? Do you have, do you have to call buffer data again? Like, how, how does this work? Yeah. I also... Magnets. How do they work? <laughs> Don't ask the hard questions like that. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll be here all night. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, boy, I just, like, look at this, and it's just, like, Greek to me. I, I'm just, like, I, know, I know. I'm trying to. And I do this for, I do this as my job. Um, it's for matrix geometry. offset. Um, oh, he's he's basically populating. Uh, oh, a matrix actually uses four consecutive attribute slots. So this is this is actually an interesting, like sharp edge of the API. Uh, when we had uniforms that were matrices, we could just make one call and say, hey, this is my uniform, right? What was the name of that function call? <sighs> we haven't done graphics in a while. We've already forgotten everything. Isn't that rough? <laughs> it, yes. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's, this, there's this thing right here. Uniform matrix for FV, mm. uh, which is basically saying uh, it is a Uniform matrix that is four by four of floats, and I'm going to pass it to you. I think V just means the way that the arguments are structured here, right? Um, you cannot do this with attributes, apparently. Uh, apparently, your matrix actually takes up, or your attribute location actually can only have a maximum of four floats. That's rough, right? So he's basically saying for every row of this matrix, we're going to set an attribute. Does that make sense to you so far? That's really weird. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because of the way our vertex uh, attribute, yeah. I, ha I, have the, I have the sense of attributes in my head as the sort of our, I don't know, it's like a register, not quite a register, but yeah, our, our. Uh, you mean, I think of it as just like a function parameter, right? Um, yeah. So why why could we not just like pass in sixteen here, right? The number of values to pull from the from the buffer per iteration. And I think this is just a rough edge of the OpenGL API. That's really weird. Yeah. Okay. Um I wonder if the like OpenGL max size of attribute. That's maximum number of in inputs. Yeah, see, this person here is doing like a, a very uh, interesting layout type thing where they're saying, I'm going to just like force this attribute to be in position zero. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they skipped one there, but they did. Huh. But you notice once they start getting to matrices, they start skipping by four. They start skipping by four. Ah, uh, weird. Right? Yeah, it's pretty weird. Huh. Yeah. Uh, max length of name. That's not what I meant. Uh, 
Oh wait, this is the same thing. Did I just like <laughs> click on that that link twice. <laughs> oh man. Um Oh, I don't know what this is. This is actually something different. What is clockwork coders? Uh, all right, I believe Greg Tavares here. The matrix attribute is a mat4, and mat4 actually uses four consecutive attribute slots. All right, that's gospel. I'm not going to question it. Um, OK. Uh, populates the color buffer. That's something that we expected, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is also an attribute, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, does that there. And, oh, this is interesting. This is the money shot. This only changes for each w one instance? Yeah. So we have an instance is basically like what's in your, uh, how do I want to say this? You have one draw call. But let's actually maybe, maybe to go backwards, let's actually check out what, what draw call they're using here, right? This draw call is, is new, right? We've never called this before. We do use draw arrays, right? <laughs> uh, but we've never used draw arrays in, instanced. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's saying it's triangles. Let's not worry about the offset. We always use zero invariably. Uh, and then we're saying uh, it is, this is the number of vertices per instance. And this is the number of times we're going to repeat that in a row. So it's almost as if what they're saying is that this is like your draw arrays call, mm -hmm. right? Just this much. And then I just want you to like loop over that this number of times, but don't do it in the CPU, do it in the GPU I th or, or at least do it in the driver. Do it like, don't do it like yeah. in the application code. Yeah. Right? Do it, do it wherever you're doing a graphics code. Um, right. And sorry, wait, okay, let me, let me, was there an attribute that we sent as, like, the thing to be instanced? Like, was that it's what It's all the, of the it's, it's, it's each of the attributes, it's right? It's the, the positions, it's the, it's the color, it is the transform. Oh, right? interesting. Those are all attributes. Um, and, yeah, so I, I think that's essentially what's going on here, is that, like, what we're saying is... Well, I guess we say it here in the attribute pointer, right? Let's try to find the attribute pointer for the positions and refresh our memory here. Because I think the positions, this is actually the one thing that's not going to change. Um, the position pointer is saying that per attribute, mm -hmm. there are two floats. Mm -hmm. So this is, one this is one vertex's worth of that attribute. This is another vertex is worth of that attribute. This is another one. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there, there's 12, 12 vertices. Yeah. And, and 12 points in each one of these shapes. Mm hmm. So where, what is rendering their offset? Where's that coming from? Right. Um, cause the colors, yeah. Right. So what is what is saying that this is one instance? How do you know yeah, that it's 12? Exactly. Right? I think that's what you're asking, right? Yeah, cuz it's not it's not being fed 5 times. Oh, sorry, there it was. Uh 5 matrices. Okay. And uh -huh. 5 colors. Uh -huh. So the matrix is our, the 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 mat 4 is our transform for each instance that we can reposition however we want. And that's what we feed in per instance. Yeah. Um So there did I miss an index buffer? Was there an index buffer anywhere here? I don't think I saw one. Feels like there should be one, to should, shouldn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't see an index buffer either. But okay, I mean, that, that explains the... This is the number of verts per instance. Number of verts per instance. And we're doing the same thing at the draw call down here, right? Um, the number of verts. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what they're saying is we're gonna we're for every instance 
We're going to go over this number of attributes in your attribute buffer unless you call this line. And if you call this line, what you're actually saying is that actually for every instance I'm going to draw, I only want you to consume one four ah, yeah, yeah. element Right, so that, that's how they're iterating. Chunk through th from the attribute buffer. Okay, so... I think that's what this is yeah, saying. Yeah, so the, the color buffer and the matrix buffer are each have each have a vertex attribute divisor of one, and that's what's right. incremented, for instance, but the vertex array is just replayed every time. That's cool. Yeah, I'm not sure... I, I guess when you change... When you bind a different buffer, this goes away, I'm guessing. Because uh, it's not like this is like a permanent global setting for all buffers, right? Ah, or for all attributes. It's just yeah. for the. I, I, and, I, and I'm not sure which of these function calls changes the state and resets that value. Because I don't know what this number should be for. What should that number be for uh, the position? Yeah, that's a good question. Wait, for the position? Yeah. So like like what, what is what like what would you set this value to by default is my question. Well so the the position buffer doesn't doesn't use that. It doesn't use it at all, at right? All. Yeah. So so is it so would the value of this just be null? Like I wonder oh, like I, what I see. is you're trying to, yeah, yeah. like what is what is somewhere in the GPU? What does it think that value is? Yeah, or in the driver somewhere. What, like, how is it interpreting that, right? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I assume it's the number of attributes. Because it, con it consumes the whole thing. Right. Would it be 12? Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, it's like you, you set the... Yeah. Yeah, it just defaults that, to... In that case, it would be variable depending on the size of the... The buffer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if a model was like fifty thousand vertices, you put fifty thousand here, right? And mm -hmm. if it was ten vertices, you put ten here. Yeah. So one seems to me to be like a very special value, right? Yes. It says that per instance, we're only gonna go this much through that through the array, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the API docs will shed light on this. It's... Calling it a device is like kind of confusing. What are you dividing? I was gonna say it's interesting that this calls it calls these the generic vertex attributes instead of the like I don't think we've nothing in this actually called things generic so far. But the WebGL docs say it's the rate at which generic attributes are consumed or are advanced. Yeah, per instance. Per instance. So. Mm. So, I maybe I'm asking a question that like. I think what you want in this is almost like negative one or like a null value. Right. And like if it's null, the absence of it just like means that you should obey this mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So really we're feeding, we're feeding, we're feeding our pipeline vertex bu uh, buffers of two sizes. Some are num vertices depending on how they're consumed and some are num instances depending yeah. on how they're consumed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can work with that. Okay, so what, what's a good demo? Why, why don't we draw two triangles? I think that's not a, not a bad thing. Two, yeah. Different colors. Do, do we want to spin up a new a new thing like a render toy? Just we to, could do a render toy. Um, or, or or something render toy esque. Like I know we had a particle emitter builder at one point, but we could sort of start a fresh one. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna take a quick bio break. Cool. Uh, why don't you talk amongst yourselves? Oh gosh, leave me to entertain the stream for once. <laughs> um, all right, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, a friend today sent me, I don't know, I don't know if I can post this here. How do I post it? I can post it in chat. Uh, send me this Tumblr post, which is, uh, the scene. <laughs> We're going to get, I would, I would buy the NFT of this Tumblr post I just sent to chat, which is, uh, the scene from American Psycho where they can compare business cards, but they're just showing off pictures of cats. Uh, Nothing but pictures of cats, and like one guy posts a fat cat, and he's like, "Oh, the, the tasteful thickness." Um, anyway, this video is actually like a very solid edit of a movie scene as well. 
that's that's my contribution to to the dead air. Uh, do any of y'all own any NFTs yet? Kirky, did you buy some on the on the uh, NBA market? I did not yet own an NFT, though people have approached me <laughs> trying to get me to work on NFT projects. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I need to collect any JPEGs. I like already have a, I don't know, Apple Photos does that for me. I'm <laughs> uh. Dean, there, there could have been so many good blockchains. We tried. It's still pretty interesting. I, uh, I continue to find the concept fascinating, but like, I am not going to burn myself up on a startup again. Oh, you're gonna have to watch the video to find out what we said, Jeff. <laughs> um, well, as long as you're talking about me and saying good things, I will. Happy. I will send you this delightful Tumblr post for later that I posted to chat to entertain yes. people. Yeah. Yes. As I was saying, it's the it's the one uh, one video I would buy an NFT of. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's not that TikTok of the of the of the guy <laughs> making eggs. <laughs> uh, I'll post that to check too. Yeah. Do you have that? No, it's in it's in our Slack. I'll find it. It's in our Slack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what were we talking about again? Putting dogs in the game. More uh, dogs. More dogs. Okay. Uh, more dogs, but actually, we're gonna make a new render toy for particles and render. Uh, yes. We're gonna render two triangles. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, here you go, Chad. Here, um, here is Jeff's cursed TikTok. Yeah, it's a good TikTok. It's it's a good TikTok though. It, it really does need audio, but also it's truly horrifying. Uh, we're gonna copy. Yes. I heard, I heard a siren in the background, and I thought someone was playing the video behind you, but no, it's actually a siren. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, we'll just like do a, a fresh. Uh... Me, it, is it is it embarrassing for me to admit that like I for the life of me, if I want to make like a clone of a directory, including its recursive children, mm -hmm. I'm not actually sure how to do that. I, I, I think it's as easy as saying I want to copy render toy to particle toy. I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, I look like. Oh my god, it works. The, the sheer amount of stuff we have to remember to make computers draw rectangles on the screen, I gotta Google a lot of this basic shit every time. But you know, like if Particle Toy, the directory already existed, something radically different would have happened. Right? Yes, I think that's right. So that's what's weird about this to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And also, it would be radically different had I... Can you see this? Had I done something like this? Oh, gosh. Would that be different? Uh, yep. Yeah. It would be different, would it, would mm -hmm. it not? Mm -hmm. Dean says the weirdest part of your video is cooking eggs in olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's the preference of some people. I think I actually cook my eggs in olive oil. Um, and if I'm feeling very fancy, I'll add a little dab of a knob of butter while I'm letting the, let, letting the yolk kind of harden. Or whatever it is you call the little like egg white that kind of sits around the yolk hmm. that they all boom in. I don't even know. <laughs> I just know these egg terms. I don't know what they mean. I just have them. Back in school, at one point, I remember actually making prints with albumin, and it was really freaking cool. Uh, oh, they were not vegan prints. No. Oh, I mean the gel. All the silver gelatin stuff is not vegan either. A lot of art's not vegan. <laughs> oh. Interesting. I didn't know that you you made. I didn't. I, I didn't, didn't know that you. I didn't make silver gelatin, but there's a lot of gelatin involved in there sometimes. I did not know that. Wow. Okay. Well, where where do where do uh, animal products turn up in other kind of like weird industrial craft style? Uh, they filter wine through squid. What? <laughs> I know that they use like a or fish, something like that. Yeah, fish. Fish organ for Guinness. Uh, right? Yeah, there's like a lot of weird fish parts in alcohols in strange places. Okay. 
And I like yeah. I learned that, and I was like, I, I, but, the, How? but that's all food adjacent, right? That's like okay, I can kind of, I'm kind of with you there. It's food adjacent ish. Has to do with carbonation of some kind. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> you don't buy it. Dom doesn't buy it. That's you can't you can't just put two foods together that have no connection and be like, oh yeah, they're they're food adjacent. Okay, that's fair. adjacent on a molecular level, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Totally fair. Um, there there must be more weird animal stuff though. I feel like we use animals for just about everything. Yeah. Oh, uh, red dye is beetles. Red dye is beetles. Red dye is beetles. Right. Yeah. Uh, that was actually one of the big things that they wanted to like export from the new world when they first got here. They're like, "Fuck yeah, beetles!" And it's so weird because they can't. The beetles came from the old world. Did they? It was a music joke. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> that would be hilarious, though, right? I'm sure there's examples of stuff that they brought over here that they, they, they realized was now better because it was over here <laughs> and then sent it the other way. Right? Isn't that like lobsters, which were like trash food? And now, they're, true. now we like export them to. We used to serve we used to serve lobsters to prisoners mm -hmm. and it was considered to be cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> and now it's like twenty dollars a pound. That's really weird. Yeah, it's really, really weird. Yeah. Not my jam. Anyway, particle toy. I successfully copied directories. Tom. That's that's the achievement for the evening. We we did all right. It. Can we? We'll just pack it in. All right. Well, I, I, it, was uh, a good, it was a good hour. Yeah. Okay. Um, it occurs to me that uh, well, okay. So if I open particle toy right now, I don't think anything will happen. I think I need to up 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 update the build manifest. I think that's right. Can you, it's ridiculous. We have a build manifest. This is the, the the overwhelming complexity of all of this. It's crazy. You know um, what? For how fast it works. I don't care what it makes. You'll take do. it? Yeah. You're too kind. Um, here's our build manifest. Nice. And we just copied Render Toy, did we not? We did indeed. Okay. Starting to kind of get the hang of VI a little bit. So it'll paste that line without touching the mouse. I saw you do that. Very, very smooth. Yes. Yes, I'm going to congratulate myself. It's just going to continue to happen in the evening. I'm just going to set that expectation up front. <laughs> and therefore, it's fine, right? I, I yeah. said it was going to happen. Um, I'm going to buy you a hat that says number one Vim. <laughs> just just for the stream. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll even wear it. <laughs> I'll totally wear it. I, I, I wish I looked good in hats. Some people look good in hats. I don't think it's me. You want a custom beanie? Uh, oh, I'll totally do a custom beanie. Yeah, custom you're, beanie. you're a beanie person. Yeah, but it has to be one of those beanies with the little, like, koosh ball at the top. You okay. know, the little fuzzy fuzzy end thing? It says number one Vim. Yeah. That's got to be some kind of, like, British profanity, <laughs> right? Like, or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Um, okay, so if I opened it up now, mm -hmm. uh, localhost 3000 tools particle toy it should just work right did you restart oh. restart the server do i need to restart the server is the server even running right now i guess did I? I don't know what you were playing yeah the game was was running um uh, probably in your your number one node tab oh <laughs> right <laughs> um i think what happens is if i think the thing that actually runs the auto update has to know about all the things that it's auto updating. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, voila! Here's the dog. I like how it was facing away from us. He was like, "I choose not to speak to you." Well, it's just it's it's very a very animal of it. I don't know. I feel like animals just they love to put their butt in your face. So this dog looks great. They do. Yeah, they absolutely do. Um, this dog looks great, by the way. That dog does look great. Give us yeah. give us some wire salad on that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that's from. I think I think I copied you, because you kept doing that. Is that a thing? Uh, I don't know why, but I've seen people do it in games when they don't want to be shot by the enemy. When they're, like, clearly caught off guard, and, like, someone has them sort of dead to rights, and they just go, like, they just wiggle their gun. They're just like, uh-uh. And it's occasionally sporting to just like let them go. I think is is what happens. This is like a Twitch thing. I've seen it in like Overwatch. Okay. All right. 
I'd have to watch a shooter on Twitch to know because I have not done that. <laughs> so I, I don't think I want to have shaders hovering over me like this, but I do like the camera the way it is right now, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a way I can slowly adopt this tool and strip away parts without totally blowing it up, right? Because it's not a render toy, it's a particle toy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Where is it? I, I don't know. I've lost it. <laughs> I've lost it. Dumb. Here. It's under tools. Ah, fair. Um, so, okay. Let's... If I got rid of the shaders over here, mm -hmm. is this going to blow up? I think it will. Does it depend on the text in those fields? Shit. I think it does. Okay. Sure does. Um, yeah. I'm okay with our standard shader for this, though. If, yeah, if I we want to pull that in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So... Let's take a look at what's going on here. Let's let's slowly decouple this from the HTML. Everything comes back to web, web, right? Uh, set current render mode. Uh, when does this actually get called? Hmm. Okay, so it is basically uh, never initialized, right? Oh, yep, fair. Okay, so let us just call it somewhere, like in the main function. Hmm. And all this recompilation garbage is gone. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah, we don't need it. I think I think we will put like sliders and tools and stuff over there, but yeah. Nice. And really what we want to do, uh, set current render mode does all this stuff, but it's not actually setting, it's, not, it's just setting variables. It's not really uh, updating the OpenGL state, right? So where do we actually choose our shaders? Use shader. No? Bummer. Use program? No. Was I searching in a selection? No. Oh, I saw a recompile call. Uh, oh, oh you know, you know it must have been a recompile. You just deleted right? it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just take a look at render toy hmm. main. So we load the shader. Oh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to call it use shader at some point, or we need to load it, don't we? I think the renderer load shader, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to throw it down here, and there's going to be a better place for it. Renderer. Great. Load shader. And the name of the shader is the solid shader. And how are we getting this in renderer 3D? Is it already loaded? Is it, is it possible that we already have it? It is. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's really great because we were just dropping the text into those things as our custom. Things. Exactly. So what we really want is um, use shader right here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Did that improve? Did that improve the state of the world? I noticed that use shader was still not typing though. Is it because renderer does not does not even exist? In that particular context, maybe not, because you're outside this function. So uh, it's there. Okay. Ah, private. Oh, you know what? It's not use shader at all. Uh, we we pick the shader in our in our draw call. So when we draw, uh, that's why the render mode was this. We were best basically picking it. So really, what we want is just this one, which is the solid shader, right? Oh, great. And yeah, all the yeah. rest of this jazz uh, is gone. Hmm. Right. Uh, it is having trouble finding the context, right? And maybe this is this, this is basically uh, where TypeScript starts to help us. Mm -hmm. There is a, also apparently in Twitter discourse uh, or online discourse in general, people that are like diehard dynamic type people. They think static types are dumb. Really? Yeah, but they're like dug into it, right? It's very strange. So that's so interesting because, like, I 
love my dynamic type languages for certain things. Like, yeah, maybe this is the the um, the the noob semi proficient Jedi version of that of that chart where it's like right right in the middle. You're like, we can only have static types or we can only have dynamic types, and and on both sides of it, you're like, I just do whatever I feel like. Right. It's a good bell curve. Okay, the model selector we still want for now, mm -hmm. right? Um, the shader selector's gone, though, yep. right? Yeah, the shader selector, the VS editor, all that, all that stuff. I think I might have deleted too much, but let's see. No, I think that's fine. Uh, the code editor we don't need, right? Nope. All this stuff gone. gone. All right, let's take a look at what this is telling us. Um, okay, a lot of hygiene stuff. Seems reasonable, and that now for file with no problems. It's got problems. It's, it's got, got serious it's got problems. problems. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I property of null? Uh, Fifty one. Excuse me? Uh, if you click on main TS51 in your, um, oh yeah, we can lose that stuff. Yeah, if you click on that, does it, yeah, okay, cool. This looks like it's not recompiling. Oh no. <laughs> we'll see. No, eh, but I watched you delete a bunch of stuff. Like the menu went away. Stuff went away. Stuff went away. But some, uh, is something still using mode select? Because that seems to be what the actual issue is. The, the switch on get element ID mode select. Is that still in here? Uh, I, I think I deleted it. It's gone. I thought you did too. It is almost as if this is using the wrong file. Ah, Does it not seem that way? That could be possible. Are we importing file? Are we importing relative paths? From uh, we file? are. Yeah. There, that's uh, the problem. Change word. This is particle toy. Huh. I tried to click and drag your text and instead drag the video on the stream. So that probably looked a little funny. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, and then probably the same in index.html as well. Ah. Uh, yeah, we killed the markup, but uh Nice. Uh and oh, oh all this grid stuff can go too, right? Oh Ooh. god. Am I gonna ruin this? I am. <laughs> it doesn't even need to be a grid anymore. Gosh, I don't even know how to <laughs> What if I mean, this is the canvas is still there, right? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I do not understand grid layout, and I have not made the effort to learn it. I mean, I'm the same way. I just added it in there because I thought it was fun. Yeah, was it? Did, uh, was, did, was it cool? I mean, it looks good. Look at me now, right? Uh, I mean, it made a great layout for Render Toy. So okay, get context null. Eighteen. That's this is this is an improvement, right? Eighteen. Okay. So get element by ID renderer. Is that on the page still, or did we delete that accidentally too? Uh, I probably deleted it. I think it's gone. Yeah, I killed it. This whole thing, right? Mm, there. Yeah, that's what we lost. Mm hmm Sick. I bet that dog's about to pop up on the screen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we just got to fix the grid. Just got to fix the grid. Yeah, we got all our stuff back. Very nice. I'm pleased. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to take two minutes to attempt to fix the grid. And we're going to do that by chucking the grid. How's that sound? 
Oh, I'm into it. Delete. Okay. Uh, do we need a container here? We probably don't, right? No. Nah. In fact, we just need the canvas, right? That's basically it. Mm -hmm. And that just worked. You're already there. That, that is incredible. I, I didn't even think that. I, I, I'm speechless. Nice. Yeah. I thought there would be like much mayhem that mm. I would have. I have to like fix selectors and that kind of thing. But instead, it's just like it's just sweet. Yeah, so a sweet ass dog. Only a small amount of mayhem. Yeah. Okay. Cass, so it's a good boy. It's a good boy. We don't actually want these models. I, I'm actually going to kill a model selector right now. Okay. Right? Great. Yeah. 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 Let, what we want is we want to draw our own thing. I right? was going to say let's let's get just the particle emitter in there, and then we can like. I feel like we will we, want to add a lot of knobs to it, but we can we can worry about everything else. Later. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Uh, oh, I noticed, models. by the way, that was using render toy CSS in the head there. Uh, Sorry, can you come again? Uh, the head of that document in Particle Toy was linking to a render toy CSS file, uh, which actually probably doesn't even exist, so let's get rid of that. <laughs> it doesn't exist. I don't, see that. I don't see that in either directory, so... Oh, you know what? Uh, it, it actually does exist. Oh. Um, oh, is it one of the... It's like a compile thing. Yeah, It's yeah, like yeah. an ES build thing. Uh, it's clever. You, uh, yeah, if you look at the render toy tools... Look at the CSS file. It's all the code. It's the code mirror stuff. shit. That's so awesome. So basically, uh, ES build will if you import CSS here, uh, it'll, it'll know to like stick it into a CSS file. It's the same name as their TypeScript file. That is banging. It's good uh, as long as it doesn't surprise you. Mm -hmm. uh, those types of things are always like a uh, little spooky action at a distance kind of thing. It's not directly what you asked for. Um, but whatever. I'm into it. Um, yeah. Let's get the Shiba in here. Just so we know, we have something drawing, right? Yeah. yeah we have, we uh, have the to. The model name is. We have to keep the Shiba? Shiba drawing until we have particles. Is that it? Just Shiba, yeah. Okay. Should be. I think is we got an error. Error. Here. It's probably trying to read from the drop down. Yeah. Just all that. Yep. The reload. There we go. There we go. Got the Shiva back. All right. Cool. We we we, we successfully deleted some code. I'm I'm, I'm pleased with us. <laughs> Duplicated, then deleted. Yeah. All right, but we do want to replace this with our own spiffy model that we're that we're actually creating in runtime, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we need a VAO. We need two triangles, and we're just trying to do instance rendering, right? Yeah. These are axes. Uh, the resize thing is fine. The camera is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably want to throw our code here. How's that sound? Sounds good. Um, okay. So, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do the weird thing where we count by a, a fake four offset to get this matrix in here. Yes. Uh, I was curious how he did the matrices by hand. And what's interesting is the renderer is hiding the GL context. I'm just going to make this public for now. Great. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> I would try to do that using the VI hotkeys. You could, you could just like... The squeaky wheel on my head, just like you know, all these axes smoking because of the friction. I was just like, oh, how do I, what buttons do I press? <laughs> oh man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn Vim, everybody. It's, 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 it's an uphill battle here. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. You're doing, um, you're doing great. Thank you. Because uh, uh, I can't do shit in Vim. Vertex array. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, I think I think we should GL. follow follow this pattern too. Like we'll we'll do this, and then we'll create a bunch of identity matrices, and he actually just iterates through them and nudges them. Okay, we bind the vertex array. Uh, the pause buffer, and I'm not looking at the docs right now, but you can walk me through this, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Create buffer. 
Let me get to the position buffer. Uh, yep. Let's see. Uh, bind, bind that sucker. The okay. Bender dot gl dot bind buffer, and we're gonna bind it to what's gonna be the position thing, right? Uh, in, our, in our solid shader, we just we just bind the, this to the gl buffer for now. We're we're f we're filling it first. We gotta put the points. In oh, there. Well, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so render uh, dot gl, GL dot array buffer. Uh, yeah. Array buffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's some other stuff in here, right? Oh, not, no, not for this one. This is just pause buffer. Just pause buffer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then gl dot buffer data. And we populate it. And we populate it. Yep. Okay. Oh, and this has the usage, right? Uh, target. Yeah. This, I mean, this is going oh, to be where there's a couple source data. Yes. Okay. So the target is uh, array. So the array buffer, gl array buffer. Wouldn't it be great if I could do it like this? It'd be just so. Nice. I mean, that would make sense, but that's too much to ask uh, from this interface. Yeah, this is like an early '90s API. Yeah, let's cut, cut them some slack. So now we actually add the Flow32 array, uh, right? Here, right? Correct, correct. And this one we're going to keep static draw because we are not dynamically messing it up. Yes. OK, um, and then here, um, I believe this is a thing where we may want to do a. <laughs> well, so and we're going to draw one triangle. Uh, that is right. Yeah. And that triangle should be facing the camera. The <laughs> camera's looking down negative Z. So what if we made that triangle? The top vertex is probably going to be 0x. The z value is going to be zero uniformly, mm -hmm. right? It's going to be a triangle flat, flush facing us. One, sure, zero, and then maybe a negative zero point five zero zero. And do, you then... want, do you want to try doing this in uh, with two D points? Especially since z is zero, I feel like we can. Uh, no, let's let's do three D because like okay. uh, the, the 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 shader already takes three D. Well, they say well, our, shader, our, our, matri our matrix is going to be when we start throwing particles out. We're going to be transforming the ma the matrix for this triangle, like rotating, and that'll apply correctly. Yeah, I, I, like, I know what you're getting at. Yeah. I think we're okay with this, just because oh, I think we're going to totally eventually okay, yeah. want to be changing the z value for the particle emitter. Okay, pretty straight away. Um, and this will just save us from having to update the uh, vertex attribute pointer, which is what's coming up next, right? Sweet. Render.gl. Uh, how do we turn that attribute on again? Is uh, it enable <laughs> vertex attribute array? Enable vertex attribute array, correct. Uh, and that is going to be uh, zero? We, this would be the position look, position look variable, which we might want to grab out of the program. Yeah. Yeah. What is the key to go to a symbol in Vim? Asking the wrong guy. I think it's GD. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised chat has not had stronger Vim, Vim opinions this whole time. Or, or, or do we have Vimmers in chat? I, I think Crokey's a Vim guy, right? I think so. Yeah. He's probably gone to bed. He's like, you know what, this sucks. <laughs> Bunch of Vim noobs. Yeah. Okay, so this shader... Uh, no, he's still hang he's still here actually. Cause, okay, cause we are gonna awesome. actually have to write a different shader, right? Because we need we need a shader that does this but takes things as attributes rather than uniforms. Correct. Right. Yeah, okay. we're we're gonna just have a different set than our standard shader, which is yeah. fine. So should we should we make a new like particle shader basically? Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's a particle shader. Mm -hmm. We probably aren't going to need vertex normals. No, I um, think un unlit sounds good to me. Um, the game is lit, but the particles aren't. Okay, so we don't want we don't want the normals. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, transforms <coughs> and colors are passed as instance attributes. And that'll happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and then where where do we need to actually import the shader from? 
I think the render has to load it right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Damn, these Vim shortcuts are getting pretty good. Um. As just as you say that, just as I struggle with the next thing. Um. I wasn't trying to fuck you up. <laughs> okay. Um, we enable the first, this attribute array, then we set the pointer, right? Mm -hmm. Attribute pointer. That is the index, which is zero. The size of it is three. The type of it is render.gl.float. It is not normalized? Sure. Um, the stride, I think we just leave at zero. Is that correct? Yeah, stride, zero. stride and offset of zero. Yeah. OK. Um, Hmm. And is there one more function call we have to call here? Or is this it? Not for this. No, I think I think now we uh, yeah. We have like a color buffer and a transform, right? Yeah. So this is this is where he switches into starting the the instance um, arrays. Okay. Let's do colors first because it's simpler. Yep. Yeah, and he also defines a num instance um, constant. Oh, right, because we have multiple data, right? Yeah, we're going to have multiple arrays that use that. Um, yep. We're doing two. Mm -hmm. This is no longer a position buffer, but instead it is a color buffer. Our colors are going to be four fours, right? And it's one color per instance. Uh, we'll do a red triangle and a Blue triangle. How's that? Sounds great. That looks blue-ish to you, yes? Uh, that does look bluish to me. Though okay. you probably want a, a, a one at the end there if you want to see the blue. Well, it depends. Or if we're not drawing alpha, I don't know if that'll show up or not. Dean says, this little dog butt brightens my day every time. It doesn't have a butthole. Guess where the um, particle emitter is going? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, maybe, maybe not. Well, I don't know, maybe. Uh, I never know. That's what kind of game we're making. Remember, remember that that really great era in the '90s when like people made weird, raunchy games. I feel like it was like Postal and Conquer's Bad Fur. There was like a whole bunch of like really sort of. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Strange, transgressive games that were just trying to be gross, but they only had like. 10 triangles per model, so it was really weird. Yeah, what am I thinking of? I played a lot of Super Nintendo, which had like the least edgy games possible. Uh, that was the one that had, in Mortal Kombat, it had sweat instead of blood. You remember that? Because <laughs> they couldn't, like, for some reason, it, they had a hard time removing the blood from the game. That's really funny. It's like, I don't want to cut the code, but... It was easier enough for them to change the colors. For, right? From what I know of those that are of games, palette palette swap is uh, just the easiest darn thing in the world. Yeah, you're right. That's what they did. Yeah, is they palette swapped it. Yep. Okay, so this uh, has four. Do we call this dynamic draw? Uh, let me the they do dynamic draw on the matrix buffer. Let me find the color buffer in here too. Color buffer is static draw. Well, nothing so, is changing. Yeah, I was going to say, the reason the matrix buffer is dynamic draw is because he's doing the rotation. So the matrix buffer is always updating. I want to look at how he's doing the, yeah. the update there. Because, correct, color doesn't change here, which is great. Yeah. Does he ever have to call bind? I'll just look at the JavaScript. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. Here are the positions. positions That's not going to yep. change. Um, these are the matrices, mm -hmm. and he that's, calls dynamic draw. That's on these. the dynamic one, yeah. Because he's hinting to. Oh, what did I lost it? Weird. 
It's because I was clicking and dragging. Never click and drag, Dom. I mean, it's the worst. What is um, Vim for if not to avoid this problem? <laughs> it's true. Um, number one, Vim. <laughs> Dynamic draw for this. And then there's going to be a loop somewhere where he's actually animating this, right? Here we go. Yeah. Render loop. Um, updates them. Mm -hmm. He does call upload. Sorry. And he calls buffer sub data. What is buffer is for sub? Yeah. Updates a subset of a buffer's object data store. Oh, this is great. I was trying to do this in my um, hmm. my Rust Wasm WebGL demo. Interesting. So he just calls this with like offset zero to replace the entire thing. He's not calling buffer data, though, which is interesting, right? Yep. I guess buffer data, does that update or does that do the initial write? Initializes and creates yeah. the buffer's object data store. So, so I assume the buffer subdata with the dynamic draw hint is actually doing something good for us on the GPU. Yeah, I think that's correct. The hint is just a hint. I, I'm actually told that some drivers don't even use that parameter at all, which makes sense, right? Like... This is so far abstracted from what the GPU is actually doing. That's fair. This this that, like, this feels yeah. like it's actually the money where it's like we we are not creating a new instance every time, but we're taking the buffer you already have and putting new data in it. I'm gonna call BS on the Mozilla people here, <laughs> and because I'm better than them. <laughs> I mean, what, what did they do? Write the spec? Whatever. What did they What did they do? Write Firefox? Child's Play? Come on. Mm -hmm. Rust. Mm -hmm. Programming language, give me a break. Um, no, uh, w the reason why I, I, I'm making a, a slight objection here is I think sub might mean substitute rather than subset. Oh. <laughs> I, I think the buffer sub means update, not like buffer I'm, sh I'm doing a small portion of the data. Uh, kind of thing. But, it, but the offset, I think, is the point it's going to write into it, so... So... Uh, I think that makes sense, but with an update call, you probably want to be able to update a chunk of it anyways, like up to and including the entire thing, you know? Um, mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Well, submit a pull request. I don't know if this is open source or not. <laughs> um, I think it is, actually. I, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll send them a, a pull request, and it'll be like a thousand comment. GitHub thread. I mean, they've abandoned this, so... Uh, 998 yeah. of which will be me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Polite Bump. Hello, I, Polite uh, Bump. Man, every once in a while I see someone else's, like, customer support queue, and it is just... It is heartbreaking how mean people are on the internet via via email. Attached to their name and account, but, like, real jerks. <sighs> yeah. We have one more function call here. The new one. Uh, it is vertex attrib divide. Oh, yes. And this is attrib one, and the divisor is one. Is that correct? Which means that this needs to be one, mm -hmm. and this needs to be one, right? Yeah. So we're just doing our we're just doing our attributes by hand now. We're not doing the get attribute location, and that's we could totally do that. But but it's actually okay if we just do it this way. We don't have to. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm into it. I find the get attribute location to be like both helpful and extremely confusing. So apparently what you can do is you can bind it. You can tell it what it should be. Ah, neat. So, uh, but no, I just, I just wanted to confirm that I was like actually understanding the right thing. Cause that's one, one less call than we've done before, but yeah. it makes perfect sense. Um, We'll have to figure out how to generalize this because right now we're assuming that like shader A's position attrib is the same place as shader B's position attrib, right? This is an enum, mm. and these mm -hmm. count up. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But when we do matrices and instance stuff, some of these are going to take up four slots, as we're told, right? Yep, yep. So okay. it's going to get a little bit tricky. All right. Uh, let's do one more buffer. Yeah. All right. 
What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Okay, so this is the one where we're going to have to do some iteration. Is that correct? Uh, correct. And for this, uh, what is this? Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> he actually did the no instances times 16 to sort of just like make the float 32 array the correct size and did a bunch of offsets into there to make stuff work. This is an interesting amount of work. I wonder if GL matrix would make this easier. Is he using that? So we just need, we need a couple mat fours that are, we need two mat fours. Actually, I mean, let, let's put, let's put just the identity matrix in there twice. That That's the start, right? Uh, yeah. We should get that to render and then, yeah. Okay, so you're doing the identity matrix, right? Let's, uh, let's start with that. Yeah, we'll, we'll be happy. Uh, yes. So we want mat four dot create. Mm -hmm. Is, is create, by the way, is that the identity on this side or is it zero? Um, uh, I believe mat4.create gives us the identity. Okay. I couldn't remember if it required a different function call for this. Yeah, it has sane That's great. defaults. Um, well, I don't know about that. You would think maybe it would always give you the, like, the multiplicative or additive uh, identity thing, but I, I believe create. Um, Beautiful. Okay. Creates a new identity cool, matrix. Cool, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. And that's what we wanted. Mm -hmm. And the buffer data that we're binding, uh, we're calling this dynamic draw because they will move. Yep. Right. And eventually, potentially, even the color will be dynamic, right? Because mm -hmm. we do want. You can imagine explosion particle like fading to gray, right? Oh, that'd be really interesting. Or yeah. Red to gray. Yeah. Totally. Uh. And does he have the entire thing in here? Um, yeah. Though it's, uh, it's sort of, uh, he, he does sort of the flow theory two building outside of this, but yeah. Is that? That's it. Fair. Okay. Yeah. So we can toss, we can toss the num instances. We will need that. Uh, let's keep the num instances in there. And then for const, this is like rows of the matrix, right? Yeah. Or columns of the matrix. I think it's column by column. It's column major. Mm -hmm. Haha, C++, get it? Uh, rewrite the app. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do, do the Dominic thing here. Oh my god, look at that. Now. Yes. Why? Why are we doing? Why are we doing the vertex attribute pointer inside this loop? Uh. That's a good question. Where do we um? So uh, we're we're gonna need like a, a render loop where we. In our update, essentially, we will go through and do buffer subdata on the matrices to. Okay, I don't even want to do buffer subdata right now. I just yeah. would like to get the triangles drawn. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think we. I don't think we need any of this except for. Um, let's see. We did the buffer data. And then the um... oh, I see. Does I... he have four buffers? I I, for this? I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um... He's got four buffers. He's got four buffers. That's that's correct. That's what I was missing. <laughs> okay. He's got four buffers. Yeah. Um... So so we loop through. We do a we do a for loop over f uh, index four. One per. Uh... So we need to bind four different buffers. Is that what you're saying? Um, yes. Well, no. One one buffer, four locations, four vertex attributes. Uh, okay. Yes. Search me. This is weird. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what we will do is we will. Uh. 
we will grab the enabled vertex attribute array. And there is a for loop here, right? He's just going to do this four times. Mm -hmm. And this stuff goes in the middle. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So yeah, I you you were on the money. I just could not figure out what the what the loop counter was, and that this makes more sense. And this is one plus i here, right? Uh, yes. Uh, two plus i because one is our color buffer. Color uh, attribute. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. How about this? Mm hmm. Man, and this is wild. We're finally going to use stride and offset. I'm, yes, I'm so I know what excited. You mean. It's, um, it's finally happened. Yeah. So the stride, the stride is uh, bytes per matrix, so four by sixteen. And then the offset is sixteen. The offset is i times sixteen. So we're reading we're reading sixteen byte chunks into the buffer. Yes. So this is sixteen. Uh, is that the stride? Yeah. The stride is 64, 4 by 16. Oh, it's bytes. Bytes, yeah. And then the offset is... Uh, I times I 16. I times 16, yeah. Yeah, ah. yeah four, four floats. Um... Well, the offset here is a full matrix worth, which makes sense, right? Because in order to get to the next attribute for this one, you need to move ahead a full matrix, right? Uh, the stride is a full matrix. The offset is one fourth of a matrix in bytes because we're reading it in four four float chunks into each attribute. Oh, I see what you're saying. So yeah. this is so this sixteen is still bytes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So the first attribute, the offset is zero. Mm -hmm. Second attribute, we're skipping over the first 16 bytes and going to the next 16 bytes. Yep. Third attribute, we're skipping over the first 32 bytes. Yep. Fourth attribute, the first 48 bytes. Exactly. So we're reading our, we're reading our 64 bytes of float data in, right. into four attribute buffers with a different window onto each, but on one, sorry, different attributes, one buffer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is making a bit of sense. Yeah, this is this is less uh, totally bonkers than I thought it would be. Why is it not like this? Uh, that's weird. Oh, const let. Okay, cool. Got our two triangles. Uh huh. Maybe we can do a mutation of the second triangle. Sure. What do you think? Love it. Uh, it would be a mat four dot. What do we want to do with it? I mean, let's just uh, let's just move it to the left. Okay. We'll yes. see. We'll see a slice of it, but like still in two D space, still facing the camera. Translate mat four dot create. Well, we'll, we'll we've got plenty of money here. We're, we're spending it. Yeah. Uh, M. Uh huh. And the vector three is vec three dot from values. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna scoot it over to the left, right? Yeah. Totally by minus two units. Let's see what we get. Okay. So now we are not rendering solid. Oh, this is this is gonna be complicated. Um, we want to render dot gl dot draw arrays instanced. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we should bind the buffer. Uh, gl dot bind. Uh, bind vertex array, the VAO. The reason why is we're drawing axes, and this is going to overwrite the model. Ah, uh, mm hmm. Right. Yep. And render dot gl triangles. Triangles, yep. Uh, uh, Jar's instance first count 
What? This says offset. I wonder if this is a different... Um, different API? Yeah. Um, well, try... Mm, how do you get different... I don't know how it's different. Yeah, you, um, you had an overloaded... Mm, oh, huh. First count. I mean, I, th I think it is offset number vertices and instance count. He just picked different words. Okay, yeah. So, so, so what this is is zero. Zero and then nine. How many vertices do we have? Do we count them vertices? We do have nine verts. Nine verts, two instances. Uh, is it actually uh, three verts? It's three verts per instance, right? Verts per instance, correct. Yeah, right. Three verts, nine points. Okay, and we're not going to draw the Shiva. Sorry. Ah, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Rest, rest in peace, little pup. Rip. We'll be back. I mean, in the future, could we possibly make particle dogs? Particle dogs. Well, once we once we do this, we can make anything the particle, right? We could yeah. we could load the whole dog in there as a particle. Hard time. Did I? I don't. Uh... Num instances. Did, did I not ever used to use need num instances? It's just when we're looping that we need to use this, right? It's going to be bet good for the loop later. Yeah. No valid shader program in use. Ah, okay. Hey, yes. I see so it. we need we need a new shader. We need the particle shader. It's interesting that it drew both triangles, though. Oh, I mean, holy shit! I'm not complaining. Well, it drew a triangle. Wait, can you rotate? Are we in 3D space now? Hey, that's sick. Cool. Yeah, it's just not drawing the second triangle because it doesn't know how to draw this thing, right? It's not our shader's not respecting this, so that makes total sense. Cool. All right, so where do we set the shader again? <laughs> Did we? We did not. Mm, there's a problem. What shader is actually loaded right now? Hmm. Does it default to solid shader? It sure looks like it. Uh, we need to call use shader of hmm. particle, mm -hmm. and we need to make that public too. Because again, we're everything. This is going to go into the render. This is eventually going to go to the render, right? Totally. But this is great. Yes. Use shader. Uh. Oop. Oop. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the, the, the gears are grinding very, very vigorously right now. <laughs> oh, how long have you been there? Good baby. Cat's just watching me do this. This little cat has been lurking on like the corner of my desk or like the corner of my camera all day long. It's great. I should, I should pay the cat tax. Gosh, that was a battle. But it's over. Uh, okay, so now we're using the particle shader. And that actually needs to happen really right before we draw. I don't know when the right, what, what the right way to do it is, but right here. Uh, and the particle shader is not dead. What did I do? Whoa, is that Sean? What's up, buddy? Nice. More folks in chat. Get in here. More folks in chat. Hello, nice. Rudel. Welcome to the party. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna grab the cat. Let's see if this works. <laughs> for sitting upstairs with me. Hi. Oh wait, our color is an attribute. I don't, I think we, I think we still need to export it like this. Real's asking, what's up, how you been? It's doing doing real good. Uh, this is almost our one year stream anniversary on here. Oh Jesus, it totally is. It totally is. Well, cause we started with the pandemic. We were like, well, we're locked inside. We should really do something. Uh, this has been, this has been, continues to be the highlight and best output of me for the pandemic, so. 
It's true. It's true. Um, Sorry, I was I was looking at a cat. What are you doing? <laughs> I am updating our stuff. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That makes a lot. So the local, the model to world transform is the transform that we want to update here, mm -hmm. right? Now, so the matrix is taking up four attribute slots, but OpenGL just knows this. It's fine. Yeah, it, it just knows. It. So if I, if I did like layout location equals three, I think this will be compiler. Gotcha. Oh, um, line 12, it should be Matt in math four. four. Yeah, beat me to it. Fascinating. Okay. Oh, hell. Let's. Mm -hmm. do, do you love mixing snake case and camel case in the same identifier or what? Oh, it's great. I mean, it's how OpenGL of it. <laughs> Attribute position, and then the output color is the attribute color. Mm -hmm. Normal is not a thing in this world. Mm -hmm. We get a color, which is an input. And this is going to be an amazing fragment shader. You just you just watch Dominic Degrati. I was gonna say, is this gonna be blow your fucking mind? <laughs> one one line of code. Cause I'm stoked. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> I did do it. Um, oh, it bothers me so much that like this is just a global sitting here, and we didn't have to declare it or anything like that. And yet they made us do the color. Yeah, Rudel, Rudel oh. says this sure is some programming. This this is some serious programming, I, man. GLSL continues to be. I'm looking forward one day to like writing a Unity shader and seeing how the other side lives. It's gotta be. It's probably just like this, but like with a weirder set of constants that we don't understand. I think with Unity, it's just they've just got a bunch of presets. Yeah. Right. It's just like it's just like working with music software. It's, it's like it's the, it's the presets. Got, you your, know? got your Ableton Live. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can go far with the presets. Oh yeah. Uh, apparently, like all of Holland Holland Oats, a lot of their like major hits. They just like had a Lin drum machine and Come on. they just used preset number one. I think Kiss on My List is exactly that. Um, maybe even I can't go for that. I don't know. Like a lot of a lot of their drum their drum beats are just like whatever the Japanese have given me, I'm just gonna run with. I love it. Which in reality was was great. Yeah. So does the shader look good? Um, it does. We're we're getting got our, a position, got a color. We've got our matrix coming in as our transform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Real says Fisher Spooner's first record is like that for Fruity Loops. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, oh, yeah. oh really? I was a big Fruity Loops fan in college. It's weird it's that good. they they changed the name to FL Studio to get away from the fact that people that it was the product Fruity Loops. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I bought their lifetime uh, up, update thing, uh, and then they just kept creating product tiers above that <laughs> in order to kind of work their way out of that particular guarantee. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we should do some. At some point, we're gonna have to do music, and we should definitely do some like weird, uh, yeah. weird synth loops on stream. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a whole education plan right now. I bought I bought a piano tutorial book. Oh, nice. Um, to teach myself piano. I mean, I know how to play the piano, but I just have no discipline whatsoever. I know, how to, I know how to play the piano, but like, I couldn't, I couldn't play even a rudimentary piano piece. But I can like, right. I, I know what the notes are. I can read music. Right. I can like, I can sort of sort some shit out for you, but like, <laughs> it ain't going to be a recital. I think for shits and giggles. Starting to come around to the relative pathing for imports. So, I mean, my, my rule is relative path for imports in the package. Yeah, that's totally fair. Yeah, because like the package does better that way, and then other stuff does better with Absolute. That makes a ton of sense. Gosh, you make so much sense, Dom. I'm a reasonable guy. <laughs> um, okay, I wanted to change one more thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's reasonable. I just want to name my things, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Now, uh, 
I assume this little sucker's been reloading every couple seconds when we save. What's what's going on over there? What is oh. going on? Oh, we sorry. have a red triangle. And a blue triangle. And a blue triangle. This is what we wanted, was it not? Uh, yeah, actually. That's great. Holy smokes! So th there's your draw instance. Uh, now, okay, we got that. What can we do with this? <laughs> Let's, I don't know. It's just so caught up in just trying to type it correctly, well, and I'm beside myself. I like now. that. I think I think you just typescript your way through that. So, uh, brute force. Nice work. Is that what you're saying? Because yeah. I think that that's exactly true. Okay, yeah. I, I think we should animate this, right? I, I, exactly what I was going to suggest. Yeah, and then possibly add like a thousand more triangles. But let's animate it. Hmm, a thousand more triangles. Ten more triangles. I, I think a thousand is a good number. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so if we wanted to animate, you got you got fifteen minutes. I actually think we could do that. <laughs> yeah, we could totally do that. Uh, okay, are we gonna rotate them? Is that is that the idea? Yeah, let's make it spin. So so we could have we could have them rotate, and our um, maybe our initialization could sort of randomly position them in X Y space X Y Z space. And then they're all just spinning triangles. Is our is our particle emitter? Uh, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, how do we do random numbers again? How do we what? I think it's just math dot random. Is that? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a zero to one value. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, this is just update though. I was thinking update. We could just rotate it at a constant velocity even. I know. I'm just getting ahead of myself here. Okay. Great. As I'm wont to do. Mm. Can't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. Cool. I Inclusive is zero, but not one. Okay. Sure. Knock yourself out. <laughs> uh, I truly. Okay. I didn't actually expect that we would get um, that array. This done. Uh, that model re instance rendering would be the the end of the night tonight, but I'm really happy about it. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So our rotation is going to be. Yes, it is the transform. The thing is, we need to know what the previous value is. So we actually need some data, right? We we need a particle. Yep. Uh, yeah. So it's interesting because I think I think the reason that um, the pause, which is the vec four. Well, vec that three? that or we just need to keep the array of matrices outside of the buffer and keep them as a as a const as a list that we can update like uh the tutorial is just like kind of brute force in it right it's now, just brute force right? in it yeah okay, i mean yeah as i say we just we just need to keep track of our matrices like make make a make a two array of matrices and then we can just iterate over that and update. yes i see what you're saying yeah. so what you're what what you're proposing is like a cache of sorts yeah that's fine yeah uh, what, what would be our entity manager list somewhere else. I think what I'm going to say we go for mm -hmm. is we have particles. We apply state updates to the particle array, and then we apply each particle's change to the matrix. To an identity matrix? N no, I, I think what you were proposing is that we, we do it incrementally. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I thought that would be like sort of in... in Memory constant, memory constant, uh, and yeah, pretty easy to just iterate through. So, is this really actually a velocity, which is zero? We're, what we're saying is basically we have some rotational speed. Rotational speed, nice yeah. Rotational velocity. Does that term offend you? Should I use angular velocity? No, no, no I'm with it. And that's gonna be some number, right? Yeah, and rod fell is just a fun word. You know what? This is too much. We'll just we'll just use two different constants. How's that? Love it. Some multiple of this. Yeah. Uh, and we need to we need to know our matrices right. ahead of time, right? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So uh, all, yeah, line eighty seven. I think we just need to. I think we need an array of two matrices. And actually, splitting splitting them into the fluid thirty two still feels good to me. Yeah, I agree. And then what I would like to do. This is all silly. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to. That work? No. 
Uh, how do I keep it going? Go, go, go. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna be like this for a while. You, you, you know this oh, about I, me. I have no, yeah, no expectation okay. to the otherwise. Uh, how about we do this at one and a negative one, and then I don't know why this happened. Const x forms. Mm -hmm. And do we want to? Uh, how am I for not create? Uh, not not into a float thirty two array yet. Because if we don't if we don't spot them, we can use this as our modification. State. Oh yeah, I I see what you're saying. Yeah. This is just 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 our matrices. Yeah, we can, just we can come back to this. Yeah, yeah. All right. This this will this will happen. Yeah, I totally I totally understand what we're gonna actually do with the particle emitter, but I also want to see this work. Okay. Yes. So this buffer data then, mm -hmm. and, and and so basically num instances is now useless because what we really want is x forms dot length. Mm -hmm. And then where am I using M? So how are we going to populate the initial buffer data? Uh, yeah, do we need a function that takes X forms and just dumps it into a float 32 array? Some, some uh, really quick... Let's, what are we going to call this? Uh, pause uh, X form data yeah. is a new float 32 array. Mm -hmm. And its capacity is... 16 times x forms dot length. Correct. And then we are going to loop over x forms, right? Mm hmm. And is this just. Uh... We need a number here, don't we? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is for J of J less than X forms I dot length. It's a bit fussy. Hmm. There's no fixed length or statically sized arrays in JavaScript, so I kind of doing this a weird way. Um, Maybe J++ on line 92 when you... You're absolutely correct. Yeah. X form data of uh, what, what, I times 16. 16. Uh-huh, plus J, yeah. Plus J. Let's just do the 16 here. Uh, equals... X forms, I, J. Mm -hmm. Does that seem reasonable? I think so. Yeah, I don't think I've constructed a flow 32 from a matrix like that yet. But I don't see why that would not work. And that's cool. We, that's actually going to be pretty repeatable as we... Uh, and this is in. this is going to be like pretty broke, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, why is it broke? M is not defined. Where am I using the word M? No, I just needed to reload. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's kind of balanced now, and now we need to we need, actually need to animate these things. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> nope. Continues to surprise me. Um, okay, so our rotational velocity is going to be some multiple of i. Let's say. Mm -hmm. How's that sound? So. We are going to. Oh, so the higher, the higher we are, dot rotate, the more we spin. I love it. We're going to rotate um, around the z-axis. Uh-huh. 
Uh, of X forms. Mm -hmm. I. I. Uh, and then uh, oh, uh, X forms I again. Uh -huh. And the radiant, the rotation needs to accumulate. Oh no! Wait, it will. because we're continuing to apply it, it the it, accumulation happens in the matrix itself, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just going to be i times some constant factor. How many radians per frame? Point one sounds good. Point one. Yeah. And then we need to apply that to the actual data itself, do we not? Yeah, so that 91 through 95, uh, 90 through 95, actually, we can just copy it. Should be a function? Should, or just, we'll just copy it. Function or copy it, whatever. You'll need the XForm data as well. Oh, no, you won't, because you're just going to... We're overwriting that, yep, right? Totally doesn't matter. We do have to resub it into the buffer, but otherwise, it don't yes. matter. Um, uh, and then the sub can happen down here, can it not? Yes. So it'd be uh, render dot bind. We have to bind the VAO first, right? Mm hmm. Bind buffer, and it's the same buffer as before, right? Uh, uh, yes. Is, so uh, model. It's uh, model we're, buffer. we're binding buffer, GLRA buffer to model to buffer, uh, yes. yeah. Uh huh. Uh, array buffer. Uh, it's weird how much how much of this stuff buffer. seems normal now. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's insane. Um, uh, render dot gl dot buffer sub data buffer sub dot sub data of the target is the is render dot gl dot array buffer. Uh -huh. The zero offset is zero. The source data is uh, x form data. I'm surprised that there's no length. Me too. But there, but there ain't. Is it maybe one of the um, one of the alternative forms of this function? There, there's no like thing in the example. Um, uh, one twenty seven to one thirty one. Plus one. There's one overload. Oh, interesting. Uh, one twenty seven to one thirty one needs to be outside of the loop. We have I in there twice. Uh oh. It, what am I doing wrong here? I just take the inner two loops and move them below one, line 132. <laughs> Dean says, I look away for two minutes and there's a spinning triangle now. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> not, not bad. It's kind of circusy, right? I kind of dig it. There's a, there's a fun vibe. There's about to be two spinning triangles, though. As soon, as soon as we hit save, the second one is coming in. Uh, Dean wants it to be 0, 0, FF, 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 and FF, 0, 0, FF. One of those is magenta. I know it. You have to change those test colors, Jeff. Uh, oh, we, this is zero. This is uh, got to be I plus one. Oh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sick. Here for it. Okay. All right. Should we make the center of the rotation the actual center of the triangle rather than the bottom of the triangle? Does that make sense? I mean, if you feel like it. I do feel like it. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, do you want to, wait, while you're looking at the color buffer, you want to change the uh, test colors? It's been, it's been requested. Okay, so, so what, what, are we, what, uh, what are we going the for? The first here? one is 0, 1, 1, and the second one is 1, 0, 1 for RGB. 0, 1, 1? 0, 1, 1. Okay. We'll do pretty much anything people in chat ask us to do at this point. Yeah, we, I, this is really what the stream is about. And yeah. the other one is what? 101. One. So they're about to get bright and ugly. I mean, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Gotta love that cyan and magenta. We're big fans of both colors on this stream. I am. Yeah. I need to learn to read Under cyan, toy. but whoa. Oh, yeah. We got backface calling on. So basically, they disappear. Huh? Isn't that. We might want to turn off backface calling for. I think we, when we're doing the particle parts. rendering, we'll want to turn that off. Yeah, if they're yeah. all going to be two D shapes, that is dope. Okay, yeah, yeah I, want, gonna... I want these to be centered. So we have to center the actual geometry. Yep. Right. Oh God, I have to do this in my head. <laughs> well, uh, just move it down 0.5. You're right. Yeah. 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 0.5, and then yeah, negative 0.5, negative 0.5. This is exactly why we have two of us oh, yeah. on this stream. Dude, can you imagine one of us trying to do this? It would not. It, it would be. It would be decidedly less fun. I would have. I'd I would have given up on uh, <laughs> the first bind buffer call. Oh yeah. Uh, 
still doesn't feel 100% centered to me, but you know what? It's strange that it's, it's more centered than before, to be honest. I mean, it's, I mean, just the triangles are down on the y-axis a little bit more, right? I think they're, I think they're rotating around their own centers more than they were before, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Let's did make, we not, we, uh, did we just not make equilateral triangles? I don't think we That's did. Basically what, yeah, we yeah. didn't. Let's make a thousand triangles. Okay. We want a thousand triangles. I do want okay. a thousand triangles. We have, okay. we have, we have one minute, but really we have five minutes. Let's make a thousand. Well, okay, but that's plenty of time to make thousand triangles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it? That's why we're doing it in 3D. Ow. Okay. Um, we can't zoom out that far. So does that mean we need to scale? Let's just make a thousand triangles. So we need to like randomly place them on the X, Y, and Z axis. Is that correct? Yeah, now you're talking. Okay. Um, all right, and that's our... And we need random colors as well. Is that, is that correct? <sighs> yeah, can we... Uh, I wonder this for instance stuff, because I would love one instance array to be shorter than the other. Like, shouldn't it just loop through cyan and magenta the whole way through? I know it won't, unfortunately. Yes, we can do that. Uh, I think what that means is our divisor goes from one uh -huh. to whatever we want the period to be. Oh, interesting. Or not period, but uh, the period of a single color. Hmm. So, for example, if the color vertex attribute divider, if I change this to two, I would expect them both to be... Used, yeah. Yeah. Cyan or magenta, right? Oh. Oh, so then... Because right, this means every two, we rotate, we change the color. Then we don't need to add any more colors because they'll just alternate magenta cyan. If we, if you put I two more think, transforms in there, well, if I set this to a thousand, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not right? sure what would happen either. Uh, but, but if we just, the only thing, if we modify X forms, that, like, that I think this is this will break, or not break. That's I don't know. surprising. But, 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 hear me out. Uh, let's just let's just do this, and then what you're saying is let's make a thousand of these things. Yeah, right? let's just let's just do the X forms because I think we'll get something. <laughs> Dom, you are correct. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, const num just try equals 1,000. Uh-huh. Going as fast as I can using these Vim, freaking Vim <laughs> keys. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be terrible if Vim made you switch like Dvorak while you're in Vim or something. The ultimate productivity hack. <laughs> And it's got to give me one of those like crazy keyboards with the thumb keys and everything like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> God, it looks like we're trying to hypnotize people watching this video. Uh, who says we aren't? Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, let me get, let me get rid of these. <laughs> Okay, so what we want is math dot random. Mm -hmm. We want to lerp it. Do we have lerp? Don't we? We do have lerp. Mm -hmm. Yes, lerp of the minimum is well, let's say negative five or negative ten mm -hmm. to ten mm -hmm. of math dot random. I love that we have that. Right. Okay. Hmm. That's not what I expected. X forms up. We're not using X forms to do anything. We're just mo we're just rotating. We're, um. Oh no, wait. We are. Yeah, I thought so. Oh, are we passing the number two in somewhere? I think we are. I think we're passing the number two in somewhere for the number of. Uh... Are we? Maybe at the bottom when we do draw instance. I think we draw. Well, it's not liking me uh, when I. Whew. When oh. The type cannot be determined. <coughs> it is a mat for array. Uh, if you get onto draw, I'm surprised that broke it too. Is negative ten too wide a field? Like, what is our? I don't even know what our units are right uh, now. Possibly. But, but, but wait, I feel like we haven't drawn them all, and it's because draw instance is actually taking the number two specifically. Oh, yes. Uh, instead of xforms.length. Yeah, line one, nope, 152. There, there, there's the problem. 
Okay, get ready to blow up the browser. It's exploded. Huh. Well, that's surprising. You know, we're gonna fix this. Oh, we're going. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip there. I'm betraying my uh, no. white supremacist. The uh, yeah. Nope. You recorded that on Twitch. The FBI heard it. Uh, that, they, they heard, yeah. the, F, the FBI is gonna send me uh, send me way. a medal of honor. Uh, ouch! Yeah. Wow, that was the deep cut. Yeah. Um, you know, we... some some of those who work forces, Dom. <laughs> Are the same that bird crosses. I fucking love Rage Against the Machine. Yes. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, can we wait? Sorry. Can we go back? Can we like reduce the scope from negative ten to ten, and maybe like not do the z-axis zero? Oh, fair enough. I feel like I feel like we've we've randomized too far. <laughs> it's just too much randomness. It's like a little. It's you've 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 over you've over randomized. Yeah. And like uh, make them all negative one to one, or yeah. All right. How about I do this? Boom. Boom, yeah. I think it's still broke. Wow. Yeah, there's one right there. No. I think it's actually because our colors aren't rotating enough. Let's let, let me let me let's humor me. Add here. more colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Uh I, I love what it. What if the divisor was Huh? Five hundred? Is that what yes. you're about to say? X forms That's not gonna Dot length. Uh, no, no, no. We're, we're we're in the our scopes are backwards at this point. Oh, are we backwards? X forms doesn't exist yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could you get tries over too. Yeah. I can just do what I want here. Whoa. Right? <laughs> you know what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put this at the very top, where it belongs. This is an important piece of data right here, right? Totally. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for humoring me. I, I'm with um, you. Uh, just a number. <laughs> Trish. As if. Mm, huh. There's still like a two going on here, right? Yeah. So what... That oh, that does seem kind of... Lo Plausible, doesn't it? Something's still yeah. rendering two items. Uh, let's let's see. Block. X forms dot length. Oh, it's still on line one two three. What happened? <laughs> I thought we did that. <laughs> I might have hit undo. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Oh, it's because we're. It's because uh, our. It's cause our <laughs> that works. That works fine. Uh, I actually think this should be uh, a constant. <laughs> let's 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 do make it a constant. Yeah. This is, ESK this is says good. ship it, and he is correct. All right. Holy was shit! Was five still too much? I mean, it's it's working. Oh wait, Jeff. Do you want to lerp the rotation? That that would look good. That would break up the 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 pattern. Oh oh yeah yeah totally. Good thinking. Uh -huh. Boy, you just lerp once and you're just like you're letting it go to your head now. It's just like friggin'. Well, that is that is the classic Pringle slogan. Once you lerp, you never can stirp. Okay, so the lerp will go from zero point one to let us say one. This? Oh. And the alpha. I just learned how to make a lizard face. Do I just type the word PogChamp? Is this in the chat? Yeah. PogChamp, PogChamp? Oh. All right. What is PogChamp? PogChamp is a lizard going... You gotta, you gotta check out chat, I guess. PogChamp. Oh, it's, it, it's, it's this dude. It was that guy, but not that guy. It turned guy out anymore. to be, like, like racist, right? He, uh, yeah, I think he was, like, happy about the insurrection which it turns out is a really bad move for your brand these days oh yeah it's kind of bad he's he's like liking the tweets that are like these people are patriots right uh, yeah he's yeah you gotta watch your likes gotta watch those likes so what's the new pogchamp Pog, yeah. pogchamp lizard pogchamp lizard rudel says mr pogchamp got canceled and so it's a komodo now which honestly <laughs> it's great i'm into it <laughs> and, and oh okay so this is the original here also into it <laughs> I, I really like the Komodo here. He's good. 
It, I like how his his neck seems kind of fun to rub. It looks like that looks like a Jim Henson puppet. That looks like there's a hand in that. <laughs> it is going some like dude's this. hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they didn't they didn't sew Kermit's neck tightly enough, so it's just kind of like a dangling. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally is a muppet. That's, that's what I oh see. Oh my god. Um, yes. Dude, heck yeah, dude. Particles. Particles. Yeah, yeah, we got particles. Okay, uh, uh, we want to lerp the... Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, okay, so we... But we do want to do in... Uh, inverse lerp from zero to x forms dot length. Because I just don't want to do math right now of i. Right? I don't know. I don't know what your inverse lerp just did. My inverse lerp is telling me how far, on a scale of zero to one, I am between. Like, how far along is I in terms of its minimum and maximum? Value? Oh, gotcha. I was gonna say just lerp math dot random, but yours is great. If I lerped math dot random from point one to actually, you could just put math dot random. Well, it means too. that the triangles would rotate at random speed, at ah, like random speed individually. Great right? point. Great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Uh. Cool. Cool. Well, this looks great. It it's <laughs> freaking amazing. Look at this. So, this is actually really cool. I love that our color the color array actually loops. Uh and that means any array loops if we have like a collection of attributes, we can sort of set a series of them. Yeah. And have that be our uh data source for the particle emitter. Can Okay, wait. La last request. Last request. Can we make these smaller? Yeah. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, can you put a can we put a scale on this map for? And what we were what we're thinking is how did uh, you read my mind, by the way? Uh, you know what? It's just because it's so dense, right? Uh, and we basically want like zero point one my on all axes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? I think. You what need, are you complaining about? I think you need an output, or you need an input. You need math4.create, dot create. Math four dot create. <sighs> always, always got a math four dot create. Always got to do that. Yeah. Uh, that didn't do what I expected it. Well, it made them, it made them smaller. We we perhaps have it is scaling their translation though, which is surprising to me. Oh, that is surprising, actually. Do we have to scale after we translate? Is that? Hmm. I think we. I guess so. Do I... you? Because I think this what. No. Uh, I did, I did not expect that. Well, let's just try it. Yep. Shall we? Yep. I think you're right. Oh god, I probably undid something that I fixed. That yeah, looks fine. Uh, I, what did I do here? Do I still have my inverse lerps? Yeah, I do. Whew! God, it's very easy to undo in this VI world and then kill yourself. <laughs> um, scale mat four dot create is our output. Mm -hmm. The next thing is this whole monstrosity. Yep. And the next thing. It's a vec three dot val from values. Zero dot one, zero dot one, zero dot one. And I think I need one more set of parentheses. Oh my gosh. Jeff, is this? Oh, oh yes. This is a particle emitter to die for. That looks really cool. I like it. Ooh. All right, now I can spread out the Z field. Yeah. I think, I think we can afford it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, look at that. Oh now, yeah. I, I don't I don't want to be greedy, but what about ten thousand? Alright. Whatever. How, how's your frame rate over there? Is it still sixty? I don't know what my frame rate is. I, I don't have any debug drop. How's uh, it how's it look? Oh, my frame rate looks good. Great. Now it's a little chunky. That looks a little chunky. Yeah. But I bet it's actually this math. Uh huh. I was gonna say we've we've picked the laziest, like most inefficient uh, implementation and it's still kinda chugging along. I mean, we are doing matrix multiplies here. This is mm -hmm. not a fast thing. Mm -hmm. But I've got 10,000 triangles. That's, How many do you have? That's so cool. So uh, this is the game now. We just got to put the Shiba back in the middle, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be cooking with gas. Can we make the Shiba a part? We, we should stop the stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just... Uh, now let's do 100,000 Shibas. Oh, okay, that's okay. where this is going, right? Yeah, like, yeah, it is, it is. Uh, 
I'm I'm so stoked on this, and it's it's nine o'clock, and we did we did great. Look at that, that's so cool. Yeah, what did we what did we buy these fancy M1 Max for, if not to draw ten thousand Shibas rotating, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does this look good at all on stream, or does this just it, look like a random like random noise? It actually looks pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's good. coming through. I, I I imagine it's even if even if it wasn't looking good, I would want you to lie to me and tell me that it was. I can um, I can tell that it was a higher frame rate before you turned it up to ten thousand. Okay. And the speed they're rotating makes it look kind of like they're wiggling, because it, it's sort of like yeah. The, I mean, that this effect pink where one right like here turning. does not look healthy, <laughs> and I, I think it's actually because the center, like we it, it, it instinctively know what the center of the triangle is, and we know that it's not rotating around the yeah, center. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but this looks like a uh, sick Cyberpunk Doritos commercial, so like I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Well, uh... I ate a bag of Doritos this last weekend. Really? It was amazing. I haven't done that in a while. Maybe I should. Do you have some Mountain Dew to go with it? Uh... This show brought you to know, you Mountain by Doritos Dew, and Mountain if it was, Dew. If it's actually less sweet and syrupy, would it be bad? Because I, I was going to say that it's like the reason why I can't drink too much of it, but maybe it's actually the point. Maybe you should cut your Mountain Dew with some LaCroix. Yeah, it sounds disgusting, actually. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of think you got to go for it with Mountain Dew, right? <laughs> All right. Well, is there a triangle Twitch emoji? I, I didn't even know that there were Twitch emojis in here. I'm, we are such bad Twitch streamers. <laughs> yeah, remember when? Um, I forget the gentleman's name. He's very kind to us. He wanted to rate our channel. Oh, yeah, he wanted to rate our channel. We're like, we're like, what is rating? You're gonna do what to our channel? More. Yeah. Um. Yes, Surly yeah. Dev. That was the fir- that was the person. Uh, he was he was really nice and may he rest in peace. We were we were. He's not dead. I hope not. No, uh, he's just we just haven't seen him on stream at all. So how you know how did you do that, Rudel? How did you, how did you make Doritos? Is that just in here? Ah, oh, there's just a Wait. Doritos emoji. There's Doritos emoji. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You know, there might as well. I mean, like, how, how is your workplace Slack in terms of the custom emoji, right? Are, are you, like, pleasantly surprised when you type colon and see all the stuff that's in there? Oh, or? oh yeah, and frequently I, I go and put some more in after the fact. Yeah, I think your custom emoji game is pretty strong, right? You'll, like, Photoshop people's heads onto things and stuff. I've made a lot of custom emoji Okay. at, yeah. at the workplace, indeed. Uh, all right. We can have emoji for our channel, and perhaps we shall. Oh, God. Okay, let me zoom it out. Oh, that's really slow. That- and I'm going to rotate. My Does God. that look cool or it, what? It's full of stars. It looks really cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm tripping balls. <laughs> okay, I'll see you ever. I'll see you later. Thanks for coming, y'all. Have a great weekend. Bye.